Hey everybody, this is Livia Caudel, founder of Conscious Wealth Builders, and you are attending the Conscious Wealth Builders Online Summit, and I am here with Richard Barrett, who is the founder of Barrett Values Center. Thank you so much for being on this summit and being here with me today. Uh, Livia, I wouldn't have missed it for the world. You're so amazing. Yes, a good friend of mine, Rosh Sodia, introduced me to you and just had nothing but amazing things to say about you. So you're definitely someone who's making a difference and impacting the lives of others. Thank you. Yes, for sure. So before we dig in, Richard, I want you to uh, share with our viewers here, you know, who you are, a little bit about your life's journey, because you're really just an extraordinary person and have a very compelling, rich, um, you know, story to share with people. So if you could just share a little bit about your life's journey and your current work and how it blossomed into what you're doing today. Okay, so let's start. You know, um, I was like you, I was born at a very young age. And uh... <laughs> Andy's got jokes. I love it. I love it. Thanks for keeping the humor. Yeah, and... Um... But I'm a bit older than you. Uh, okay, I, I just turned 71. I'm a young 71. I feel like I'm a 20-something, but anyhow. And I behave like I'm a 20-something. And the reason I be, I'm be i like that is because I'm living, as I say, uh, from soul consciousness. You know, um, it's taken me, um, my, my last book, uh, A New Psychology of Human well-being. I, I write at the beginning of the book. Uh, I couldn't have written this book uh, any earlier in my life because I wouldn't have uh, experienced all the seven stages of psychological development. And mm -hmm. that last stage is really about serving humanity and uh, living in soul consciousness. Actually, we start our lives in soul consciousness from the, the moment of conception or shortly thereafter. Um, the soul incarnates into the embryo and uh, after a few weeks the um, reptilian mind brain forms and the soul gets pushed into the background slightly then uh, in our, uh, about two years old the limbic mind brain becomes dominant the body mind the reptilian mind brain becomes a subconscious the soul mind now becomes the unconscious and then when the neocortex comes in around the age of um, seven or eight and continues developing till we're 24 the uh, emotional mind becomes a subconscious the body mind becomes the unconscious and the poor old soul gets shoved way back into the super unconsciousness so that's the first part of our lives up to the age of 30 and then thereafter the whole challenge is to move back into soul consciousness or soul activation so that you can actually live out your true purpose and of course that's what your series of programs is all about yeah wow so <laughs> i've got like so many questions about that but uh you know like you said you know it's really taking you to where you're at to really understand the full process so can you just kind of walk us through maybe a little bit of your life's journey and how you got to understand these things okay so i was born uh, in the north of england into a you know a poor family my mom my dad and me and um uh, my um my father uh, never went to university but his aspiration for me was that i had a really good education uh, he was a mechanic working on on uh, in mending lorries that had broken down that's uh, trucks in your language and um uh he died when I was 17 and I was doing quite well at school and my mom's and he we didn't have any money my mom and I and my dad said my mom said you know your father's one wish is that you go to university but you know my mom was a stay-at-home mom she said look uh, if if you can survive get a grant to go to university I'll find a way of getting a job and and surviving my so, so we can fulfill your father's wish and which was fantastic you know um, and uh, so that's what happened and um, we never looked back because I you know went to university after a couple of more years working um, I paid off my mom's mortgage so she was um, you know safe and secure and uh, it you know I just grew and flourished from there well next big thing that happened to me was um, I, I, I actually was trained to be a transportation engineer and I was in in my mid-40s when um, I suddenly realized I was totally bored 
with my career. I was working at the World Bank. I was known all over the world as a leading transportation engineer, and I was bored. And I thought, well, okay, what the heck's going on? And I said, what have I been studying all my life? I've been studying psychology, Eastern Eastern mystics, spirituality, etc., etc. And I thought, oh, you know, what I'm really interested in is transformation. And then I thought, oh, you know what? You know, when I was 17, I, I thought I heard my soul say uh, transportation, but actually I was a bit deaf, and I heard, it was really transformation. <laughs> <laughs> There's just those little nuances, those little nuances that make a huge difference. I love it. That's great. So, so here I am at the World Bank, kind of figuring out, well, what am I going to do? So, I, you know, I'm listening for my voice of my soul. It tells me to write a book on personal transformation. So, I did a guide to liberating your soul. It took me four or five years, and you know, during that process, I realized very quickly, um, you know, the voice kept telling me there are more books to write. There are more books to write personal transformation, organizational transformation, societal transformation. Anyhow, cut a long story short, I started working on the liberating the corporate soul in, uh, or four or five years later and invented a way of measuring consciousness by mapping values to a model called the seven levels model, which is an extension of Maslow's uh, hierarchy. And um, that was my passport out of the World Bank because I set up a company then um, to uh, to do that and that's been flourishing ever since that was uh, 20 years ago next year now it's a very interesting point there that I think you know listeners might want to know about in the 40s and I'll talk about the stages of psychological development later but the first stage of soul activation occurs in the 40s and this is when you begin to find a meaning and purpose in your life because that's the ego's perspective on what's happening the soul doesn't need to find purpose it knows its purpose but the ego is looking for meaning and purpose and the soul uh, in the 40s wants to s express itself that's the first stage of soul activation and that's when many people begin to find their passion and meaning in life but then they're faced with a big issue is like okay so this is what I love to do but how do I earn a living doing that because I've got a wife and kids now and you know how do I make the transition? And you know, so that's here's so some... great, Richard, because that's exactly what this entire summit is dedicated to. Wow! How do I get access to my purpose? I've had a glimpse of it. I'm starting to get this yearning and this desire to express it in the world. But how do I create a business around it? How do I make a living such that I can support myself and my family? So I just love what you're saying because it's so yeah. what this is all about. Yeah. So you know. So. The what I le the lesson I learned was uh, follow the voice of your soul. You know, you get. I call. I at that stage I was recognizing that there was this voice or this thoughts so that kept coming to me about what I should do, and I kept listening and li and following those thoughts. It's like, you know, it's like. Um, if you want to attract birds into your garden, you you drop down breadcrumbs and they follow and come into your garden kind of thing or ducks or whatever you see. And, and that's what life is like. You follow the breadcrumbs because those breadcrumbs are actually soul impulses you're through created through synchronicity, which are guiding you down that path if you're willing to listen. And if and this is the big if, if you don't have any fears, because if you've got fears, you know, particularly about survival, you're not going to be able to fully self-express at this first stage of soul activation, which is, as I say, usually in the 40s. And so, um, so you then, you know, you start down this path and you find you become passionate about what you're doing. And, and, and so very quickly you think, oh my gosh, I really want to make a difference in the world by living out my meaning and my purpose mm. and so that's the second stage of soul activation which usually occurs in the 50s now the interesting thing about that stage of soul activation is that in order to make a difference you have to be able to connect with people because you can't make a difference if you can't connect mm. so true so so the second stage of soul activation is all about connection now this is where men sometimes have a problem 
let more so than women do. Why? Because if you go back to the first three stages of ego development, the second stage, the first stage was surviving, not to two. The second stage is conforming. It's the, it's the age between like three and eight. Mm. This is when you're wanting to feel safe in your parental framework. And so you have to learn how to fit in and you have to learn uh, how to express your feelings, which for little boys is an absolute no no you're not taught to express your feelings you're told to you're told to be strong you know don't show what you're feeling etc yeah. etc see and what happens is that comes back to haunt you in your 50s when you have to connect in order to make a difference mm. and incidentally by the way that is a that issue that particular issue uh, leads to ill health in men, particularly prostate cancer in the late 50s and early 60s. Because in my new book, I, I make the linkage between failure to master stages of development and um, the um, leading causes of death. Anyhow, leaving that on one side. So now, let's say we were successful in making a difference in our 50s. In our 60s, what happens is we, we get so much joy and satisfaction out of making a difference. We want to be in service all of the time. Now, hopefully by this time, you've managed to survive and you've got your, you know, you may have a, you may have a pension coming in or you may be doing some amazing work uh, helping people but the point is here that th this 60s is all about service and that is about contribution so here we go the first stage of soul activation is expression self-expression the second stage is connection and the third stage is contribution and that's like 40s 50s and 60s that's what i learned living my life and as I learned that, I now look at other people and it, I've looked at many other people and it all fits that similar pattern. Interesting. You know, um, I'm 29 and I have done a lot of personal development work. Um, right. So I feel that perhaps um, I maybe have sped up my time. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to address that because many people say that, okay? And that's great because you're feeling your soul impulse, okay? Now, let me tell you, that's exactly how I felt when I was 29 and a transportation engineer. I was making a big difference. I loved my work, etc. So all I'm saying is wait till you get to 40 because there may be something bigger and better for you, okay? I feel that. I definitely feel what you're saying. Intuitively, I, I agree with that, yeah. Yeah. So there's still very much a part of me that's, you know, surviving, you know, and yeah. and learning how to really, really connect with others. And even though I say, you know, I want to make a difference and I contribute, um, you know, I mean, there still is very much a part of like, well, I haven't figured out how to really earn a great living doing what it is that I love to do. And I'm still grappling with that, although I'm in action, I'm having a blast doing it. But yeah, there's still there's still some struggle and that's why I created this is to be able to learn from people like you and to be able to help other people that are also dealing with that. Right. So, um, you know, I would think that what you're going to find, and I've talked to many people about this, is that throughout, throughout your late 20s and 30s, you're in the individuating stage of development, which is what, something that Carl Jung talked about quite a lot, where you are letting go of the mask that you learn to wear, your ego learned to wear to get its needs met in the cultural framework of your existence. You know, for the first three stages, mm. we are young, we, we, we learn to fit in and we, we, the ego builds a mask which, through which it interacts with the other people in order to get its needs met. You've got to drop that mask. That mask is basically made up of fears which about getting your deficiency needs met, as Maslow would have put it. And so dropping the mask is the is what the individuating stage is about, which is usually 25 through to 39. Now, some people can learn how to do that quite quickly. Other people, it takes a little bit of time. But what I'm, you know, the advice that I would give to you is keep on doing what you're doing, feel the impulse, recognize okay, I'm having a difficulty, uh, you know, making the money to survive in order to finance my life, doing what I love to do, but stay with it because I think there'll be something bigger and better for you which will flourish mm. as you get into yeah. your late 30s and early 40s. And, and, and that's exactly 
you know, been my experience. Um, you know, when I left the World Bank in, I think I was 52, actually. I mean, it took me seven years to get out of there because, I, you know, I had that survival issue. I didn't know quite how to do it. So when I left, um, people, my colleagues said, well, you're pretty crazy. You know that because if you stay another 10 years, you'll get a six-figure tax-free pension. And, and, and what you're doing is you're going out to do work. You're not quite sure what it is yet and you've got no qualifications in it and you have no network so you know that sounds pretty crazy and mm -hmm. i said you know it does sound crazy but it's what i have to do yeah. i've got no choice yeah yeah you know i've i've so it's interesting that you're you're pointing out the the ages the different ages and and i'm willing to open my mind to to hear what you're saying um, I did have uh, a few people in their 40s, late 40s, maybe early 50s that had commented on a video that I posted about really discovering your true purpose. And these women had come to me and they said, Livia, you're so inspiring. And I feel like I'm in my later years and I still don't know what my purpose is, but they're wanting to know. Okay. So look, here's the big advice on this one. I meet a lot of people who say that. All right. Mm -hmm. This is what you have to remember. You are living the life of your soul, okay? That, you know, you, you don't have a soul. You are a soul, okay? It's a huge shift in identity. Now, when you look at your life from the soul perspective, the soul ex knows exactly what it's doing, okay? And the issue isn't purpose. The issue is self-expression. Mm. It's self-expression. That's the issue. And we, the ego translates that as purpose. It and what the ego says, well, if I found my purpose, I'd have meaning. Well, the, the soul, who you really are, bloody well knows all of that. The soul knows why it's here. Wow. The, the soul, all the soul wants to do is express, express fully who it is. Got it. So what I'm hearing you say is that we got to get ourselves out of our own way. Yeah. Or in other words, our ego, get, yeah. get our ego out of the way so our soul can be fully self-expressed. That's point one. Point two is you've got to recognize who you really are. You see, you think you live in a three-dimensional material world. You know, it feels pretty solid, okay? Mm -hmm. It's an illusion. Get over it. The three-dimensional material world is contained within a fourth-dimensional energetic world. You know, Einstein totally knew that. Quantum physics totally tells us that we live inside a fourth dimensional energetic world which is in maybe inside another dimension of energy world but anyhow we and our soul comes from that fourth dimension of energetic world that's where our soul comes from mm. okay so our what our soul does it dumbs down if you like its consciousness in order to be in three dimensional material world okay and let's go in a sense of its four-dimensional awareness and comes into the body and uses the body's perception, the five senses, to navigate in this three-dimensional material world. Well, you see, our five senses are extremely limited in the frequencies of vibration that we can actually um, understand. So it's like having an old radio where you can choose into tune, tune into five stations that's what the three-dimensional material world is like uh, the soul world is you can tune in if you live in that energetic dimension of the fourth <laughs> the fourth dimension you can choose into 2000 stations okay mm -hmm. now whenever you get synchronicity happening in your life that's the soul's impulse from that fourth dimensional energetic world here's another way of looking at it if you have a comb you know you comb your hair Okay, cover up the top half of the comb and all you see are separate teeth, right? These, that's me, that's you, we look separate, the whole material world looks separate. If you lift your hand off the top part of the comb, you see we're all connected because we're all individuated aspects of the universal energy field. And at that level, at that fourth dimensional energetic level, the soul is in charge of your life. And if you can give your life over to your soul, then you can not only live your purpose, you live your purpose through self-expression. Wow, that's so beautiful. So, you know, there's so much um, <laughs> there's so much confusion out in the world right now. There really, really is with so many different kinds of religions and belief systems and, 
you know, all this, you know, kind of stuff. But what I really hear you saying is like, soul, you know, if you're a person who believes in God, you know, it's kind of like, it's give your life up to God, you know, and through a lot of different scriptures, the Bible and all these things it talks about, you know, let go and let God and give your life up to God and those kinds of things, which essentially is kind of what you said. If God is your soul and you're giving your soul, right? Okay. So you'll notice I haven't mentioned God yet. All right. Mm, yes. All right. So, so my philosophy is this. I have a connection to my soul. All right. I have a strong connection to my soul. And if I live the life of my soul, I, all I have to do then is let my soul worry about the connection to God. I don't need to. I don't need to climb up the hierarchy here. I just need to live the life of my soul because my soul has that connection. I don't need to worry about that if I'm connected to who I really am. Mm, wow, that's really beautiful and very simple. I like that. <laughs> that resonates. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, Why so make it I think enough said, Richard. It... I think we're good today. I think we all just figured it out. <laughs> Man, well then, let's just get on with it. <laughs> okay, so the points that I'm taking away is really know who you are. Yeah. Which um, you have books that go into more detail of the ego's development and these kinds of things, correct? Yeah, sure. And I've got a whole website with vid videos and presentations and stuff like that. Yeah. That's wonderful. And so how can people um, go to – what's your website? Well, they can go to www.richardbarrett.net. It's B-A-R-R-E-T-T, -T, Richard Barrett, all one word, dot net. And, um, you know, it's all there. And that's inside my company website, which is valuecenter.com. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can get to richardbarrett.net, have a look around. I mean, you know, if you read everything and watched everything, uh, you'd actually be there for several days because there's a hell of a lot of information. There. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but anyhow, that's, uh, that's really the easy way to, you know, find out what I'm up to, what I write about see some of the presentations and hear me uh, you can listen to podcasts you can see videos etc cetera, etc cetera. that's wonderful that's so great and um so what do you see like right now you know consciousness is rising on the planet i mean we're all feeling it we're all seeing people awaken and start asking questions like who am i why am i here so what's your take on what's happening currently on the planet well, um, what's happening currently on the planet has been happening on the planet for thousands of years. There's been an evolution of consciousness, which if you go back to the cavemen and then to the tribal leaders and then to the feudal system and then uh, into our more modern um, uh, capitalist uh, democratic system, what you see is an evolution of consciousness taking place, an evolution stepping, uh, uh, stepping from... Uh, what's happening right now with stepping out of ego consciousness into beginning to step into soul consciousness and it's different in different countries because each country each culture um, uh, is at different stages so you know if you're living in uh, the former USSR or in North Korea or several other places um, they don't allow self-expression and so anybody at the individuating stage and self-expression stage will get locked up or killed because these are authoritarian regimes operating at a lower level of consciousness. Interesting. Now, you, wouldn't, you know what happened at the Arab Spring. The Arab Spring was exactly the same issue. Here we, we had in Egypt and one or two other countries a bunch of young people who've been educated, had good jobs, moved further through the first three stages of development, ego development, got to the individuating stage in the late 20s and early 30s, and wanted to find freedom and autonomy and then express themselves. Well, they hit up against a regime, an authoritarian regime that didn't want that to happen. And so you had all of those disturbances in, in, in Egypt, a sort of like a those people came up against a cultural shock and basically I, I know some of these people and uh, and many of them just left Egypt you know they, they because they needed to grow and develop they needed to find their uh, individuate and self-express and they couldn't do that in wow. that regime it's getting better but you know it's um so so, so we have to well, when you say consciousness is growing on the planet it is 
but it's growing because people have been able to satisfy their 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 as Maslow called them their deficiency needs, the survival, safety, and and security needs, uh, because there is more wealth around and there is more um, education around. So that's what's fueling mm. this raising consciousness because now people are individuating and self-actualizing in larger numbers than ever before. Wow, that's really amazing. So who would you say, like what culture would you say is the most self-expressed and evolving quickly? Do you have a, an opinion or a say about that? Yeah, I do actually, yeah. Um, as you might expect. <laughs> <laughs> I did expect it. So. <laughs> Okay, um, we've mapped the values of 26 different nations, and, I, and, I, and I've written a book called Love, Fear, and the Destiny of Nations, so I've looked at an awful lot of nations. So basically, the Scandinavian nations are the most advanced uh, in terms of evolution of consciousness, and particularly evolution of group consciousness or c cultural consciousness. And I would pick out amongst those, difficult to pick between Norway, Sweden, and uh, Finland, but between the, and Denmark. But the, uh, those four nations are actually at the forefront of cultural evolution, in my opinion. Mm. Um, there are some outliers like Bhutan, where there has been a big focus on uh, happiness. And Bhutan also is a very a Buddhist, is completely Buddhist. So the people in Bhutan... Mm have this higher consciousness built in from the word go. So if Bhutan beautiful. is quite, quite involved, even though when we map the values of a Bhutan, um, it was a kingdom, the, 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 the value showed us that it was quite highly evolved, the people were quite highly evolved. But in terms of our modern society, I would definitely go with um, Norway, Sweden, Finland, Denmark as being at the cutting edge of the evolution of human consciousness. That's amazing. So uh, basically, I'll want to find a place in Sweden so I can hang out sure. with highly evolved people. <laughs> I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there all next week. <laughs> Are you really? I'm doing a little speaking tour next week in Sweden. So um, wow, that's so I cool. And one of the one of the things I like to do is I like to test out my new ideas in Sweden because I, you know, if it works in Sweden, I know I'm tapping into this higher consciousness and it's working for these people. So I'm taking my a new program that I'm doing called the Ego Soul Dynamics of Life and Leadership, which is based on my new book, A New Psychology of Human Wellbeing. I'm taking that workshop to Sweden. I'm going to be starting it in November and giving that workshop in three parts. Uh, half a day in November, half a day in December, then half a day in January. And then I'll be doing the full workshop in Tuscany, in Italy, in May. And if you put, if you go to richardbarrow.net slash capital E, capital S, capital D, ESD, Ego Soul Dynamics, you can find uh, all the information on my workshop in Italy next May. That's so wonderful. That's awesome that you're you know, traveling the world and really spreading your self-expression. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, well, you still are you, by the way. Yes, no, very much so. And, you know, you've been successful at being able to create a living doing that. Yeah, excellent, yeah. Yeah, and so that's, you know, some people that are, you know, the viewers, these are, you know, maybe they're business owners and they ha own a conscious business and, you know, they're doing well. But there's going to be a lot of people who are viewing you know, this online summit that are really searching for, okay, so I'm going to do some more discovery around my soul's purpose. Now I'm starting to understand and get a better understanding of my strengths and what my soul wants to express. So what would you say, you know, how do they get started with their own business and what are some of the struggles that, you know, you faced or. Okay. okay. The first thing is know who you are. And the second thing is you can go online and do a free assessment of, of uh, w on your values at which levels of consciousness you're operating at. And Amazing. if you go to values center, C-A-N-T-R-E, spelt the European way, valuescenter.com slash P-V-A, personal values assessment, it, uh, it takes about two minutes to do the survey. And with a few minutes later, you'll get back a map of your values and the discussion around the levels of consciousness you're operating from. That's a useful start. That's beautiful. So you know what, viewers, I'll go ahead and post that link right below, Richard. Yeah. 
for them to go ahead and take that assessment because that's that's an awesome tool. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, great. And so basically, once they know at that point, what would be the next step as far as really stepping into that yeah. and, and creating money so they can live and thrive in the world? Because we all need money. Yeah. And um, okay, so you used a very interesting word there, need. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about that. Okay. All right. Wonderful. We Thank all, you. We all think we have needs. All right. And that's the ego talking. I see. Yes. Okay. The soul doesn't have needs. It has desires. Significant difference. Why? Because at the quantum reality of the soul, the soul creates whatever it wants by thinking. That's exactly what the quantum thing says. You know, you believe creates your reality. So here's the problem with needs. When you think you need something, you believe your life is not perfect. Mm. When, you like, when your life is not perfect, then you, then you get fearful around getting those needs met. As soon as you let fear in, you've lost it. You've lost the plot because the soul doesn't have any fears. And you've lost your connection to your soul as soon as you say, I have needs, and that leads to fears. And as soon as your ego has fears, it separates itself from the soul because the soul lives in an energy field of love. Wow. So, yeah. So, so one of the things to practice, and I've been doing this for 20 years now, and, 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 and yeah, I got a, some difficult comments about this, but it works. I, I practice saying all the time, I have no needs. Beautiful. Okay. And yeah. so what that does, it means that I never get into fear when, when I think, uh, you know, there's a need, uh, something that I need and I don't get it, I immediately remind myself I have no needs and I take fear out of it. And guess what happens? It, amazing it amazing things happen. Oh, right? that's so beautiful. Yeah, no, I got it as soon as you said that because the need instills that there's a lack exactly and, and from the soul perspective yeah. there's absolutely no lack at all you know what's wonderful is okay so then there's human beings forgetting so i've heard this and i've had this realization in the past many times so this isn't the first time i've had the realization but then we wake up in the morning we sleep we wake up in the morning and then we forget <laughs> so it's like we evolve but it's like you forget these realizations that you have right so like you said it's yeah. a practice because we got to practice, gotta... practice 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 every time you get upset every time you get upset that upset is about a need not being met first thing you have to do is say richard you talk to yourself okay you mm. say richard i notice you're getting upset this morning because you have a you think you have a need that's not being met let it go you don't have any needs your soul can supply everything that you want even before you know you want it oh that's so great it just is like so don't stress just give it up and that's what like let go <laughs> let god like all of these sayings i always wondered what does that mean let go and let god you know and it literally is let go of the upset the anger the frustration the need is what you're pointing to because that is the ego the fear yeah no the fear that's the point let go of the fear that drives the yeah. need about not getting my needs met because the fear that drives the need, if you don't get your need met, you get angry. Immediately, you've separated from the soul. Wow, that's really good stuff. I love that. And then, so there's a desire to be abundant and prosperous and all of these things. Oh, get abundance. Oh, my God. You've been listening to all these spiritual people. Oh, God. Look, the soul incarnates. It knows what it's doing. You know, the ego needs abundance because it's afraid of lack. Look, get over whatever it is and just live the life of your soul. And you'll have enough of everything you need if you lead the life of your soul. The problem is if you get into thinking, I don't have enough, I'm not loved enough, or I am not enough, that's exactly what's going to happen, mm. you know. So, um do I live a life of abundance? Yes, I do. But you know what I say? I live a life of enough. Mm. I lead a life of enough. And that's what's important. Yes. No, that's beautiful. I love that. And so what you're saying is that the soul 
will give us everything. We'll have enough. The soul will provide exactly enough. what yeah. it is. The, the, the problem is that the ego gets locked onto this abundance and translates abundance to plenty and more than I need and I can give it all away. No, the soul will always supply you with enough to satisfy your needs and the needs of the life that it intends you to lead. So don't worry about abundance. You know, in fact, don't even worry about enough. Just, just lead the life of your soul and you will have everything that you need in order to feel a sense of fulfillment because fundamentally the yeah. issue in life is well-being and well-being is the ability to meet the needs or desires of the stage of psychological development you've reached so you know for the baby who's like not to two years old well-being is about satisfying its physiological needs well-being of a teenager is about satisfying its needs for recognition and for being uh, uh, recognition as a part of a peer group where he, that person is valued. Uh, well-being for a 40-year-old is uh, about finding a sense of meaning because the soul is ex fully your soul is fully expressing itself through you um you know for uh, somebody my age in their late 60s early 70s um uh, well-being is about service to humanity and the planet and it's mm. about contribution so so what you need to do at each age each of these stages is you know find a sense of well-being through living out and satisfying the needs of the stage of psychological development you're at. Now, the thing is not to worry about satisfying those needs. If you're in alignment with your soul, you will be invite. If you let fear in, the soul will disappear. But if you can just allow your life to grow and develop naturally without thinking that I have needs or my life is not perfect or I need abundance or just allow, feel safe and, and trust your soul because the soul is who you are. It incarnated into your body and you are your soul. You're not this ego that has needs. You're this soul that has enough of everything for you to live your life. That's awesome. I love that. And um, I'd like to ask you a question about that. So when you're in connection with love and your soul and you've handed your life over to your soul, the soul expression is just naturally there. It's just a natural process of what there is to do next. Absolutely. It's a natural expression. And so, you know, for example... Uh, you know, I uh, I can walk down my street and there's a fellow cleaning the street and I'll stop and talk to him and I'll tell that person, you know, what a wonderful job you're doing. I'm so glad you're keeping our street clean because it looks so lovely and I want to thank you. I'll go into the coffee shop and I'll see the barista there and I'll say, hey, how, how's it going? What makes you, what's making you happy today? Mm. And, you know, I'll tell you a story about that. So I did that. And then the guy said, well, actually, uh, what was making me happy today, I, I just released a record. I'm a singer. I just released a record. I said, that's fantastic. He said, yeah. Uh, he says, what was making you happy? I said, I just released a book. Oh, he said, that's fantastic. Give me the name of the book. So uh, the name of the book was What My Soul Told Me, A Practical Guide to Soul Activation. So I went, I had my coffee and I went. I came back at lunchtime for a snack, same place. So the guy says, <clears throat> I downloaded your book. I read 50 pages. He says, I can make a song about that. <laughs> I love it. That's so great. Okay. So I talk to everybody. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Because everybody the soul. I recognize everybody because everybody, all ages, all, all, no matter what they're doing, everybody wants to be recognized. They want to... So I was at a meeting this afternoon at a big, one of the top four accounting firms in London, you know, and I was in this meeting and there were eight, well, 12 of us. So I, 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 I grasped the meeting and I went around and I said, okay, I want everybody to tell me, you know, what they're passionate about in life before we start talking about the work that we're here to do. Mm. Okay, so this this there was a bunch of, some of them were students working on a project and one of them said, well, actually, I, 
you know, I played the guitar. I'm really passionate about playing the guitar. And then a, a girl said, I'm from Colombia. Ah, I love dancing. And then a, a friend of hers from Colombia said, I do too. We went around the table and found out what everybody was passionate about, what they love to do. And then I said, well, actually, the reason we're all here is to work on a project together. So what you've all told me is that your primary motivation is music, dancing, etc. But what we have to do is we have to create a culture in this team um, whereby we have to get some this piece of work done. Um, does it help knowing what, what we know about each other what we've just discovered about each other and of course they said absolutely we feel more connected now because they expressed yeah. what they were passionate about okay mm. now I could have asked them what you know I could have asked them what are your top three values and we would have achieved the same result mm. wow that's really awesome that's so great and I loved how you said it earlier I want to point to this the fulfillment piece you know um, I know me when I was younger, um, growing up and, you know, a lot of fear. My mother was a single mother and sometimes yeah. there wasn't enough. And so I remember making a declaration to myself that I was going to do whatever it takes to never be broke. So I spent the, the majority of my young adult <laughs> life chasing after money. Yeah. And Match. Yeah, lack of fulfillment all the way around, you know, drug and alcohol abuse. I mean, you name it. I was just like trying to fill the void of the lack of fulfillment. And so there is a very and when I created the, the name Conscious Wealth Builders, it's not wealth in the monetarial sense. It's really what you're pointing to, which is this this just this wealth of fulfillment. It's conscious wealth builders and really redefining what we make that mean because sometimes right. there's so many people that are like oh i want to be a millionaire and i mean there's so much of that going on you know yeah. and so much lack of fulfillment because they're not getting that and i'm guilty as charged for that too right i've yeah, had yeah. this expectation of like oh i want so much so much so much and really my soul is telling me like simplify simplify you actually don't consider you don't want that to be fulfilled Okay, so here's a little affirmation you can use. I found it really useful. Mm -hmm. um, I, I design my life the way my soul wants it. I design my life the way my soul wants it. Oh, that's so great. That's so beautiful. I've never heard that. That's so no. awesome. It so totally that's, works. That's surrender. That is complete surrender. Yeah. Oh. I just feel so self-expressed and at peace right now. Yeah, good. Hang on to it. That's beautiful. Yeah, now it's just remembering it every day. <laughs> so I'm going to put my affirmation yeah. up on, you know, somewhere where I can see it every day because that's the important thing, you know, is yeah. remembering these affirmations. and. Yeah, yeah. I, I started that about uh, 10 years ago now. And uh, it's been amazing uh, to see how that has worked in my life. And uh, I have never been happier than I am at this moment and completely fulfilled in every aspect of my life. Yeah, you can really get that sense. Just who you're being over there is just this generous man. You know, you're in your young later years, <laughs> full of laughter, full of humor, full of a sense of well-being. And it's, you know, that's that's wonderful. I love that. The soul is very playful if you allow it to be. Yes, childlike, right? Yeah. Mm, that's so great. Yeah. That's so wonderful. Well, listen, you know, it's been awesome. Is there anything else that your soul desires to share with us? <laughs> uh, let me just tune in in a second. <laughs> Please do. The, the word that's coming to me is trust, okay? I'm getting a message about trust, okay? So... There are stages in uh, soul activation. The first thing is to befriend your soul. Oh, sorry. The first thing is connect with your soul. Admit that you have a soul. Mm. You can even talk to your soul. Befriend your soul. What does a friend do? A friend cares about you. So care about your soul. Your soul will then care about you. And here's the word, trust. Mm. Trust is the key to connecting with the soul. Trust the soul to supply your needs, to work at that fourth dimensional energetic level to create opportunities for you to fulfill your soul's purpose. 
trust is the word trust is the word that's a wow that's beautiful because yeah because it's you know what creeps in a lot is doubt yeah yeah and, I, and that's the fear for sure but it is the doubt so the opposite of doubt would be trust so that definitely yeah. makes wonderful sense yeah. well thank yeah. you richard soul <laughs> we're gonna post the free uh assessment link below so everybody can get their own assessment you know definitely i highly suggest getting richard's books you know diving in um as much as you can to his website and getting involved in what you're doing because it's just even this call has been very healing for me so thank you you're very welcome wonderful all right well thanks again and viewers stick around we've got some great other speakers lined up here for you for the Conscious Wealth Builders Online Summit. Take care and have a great day. Bye.